obviously with the historic events that took place this weekend, wanted to address uh, just Roe versus Wade. And I've asked Monica Henderson, the executive director of Beside You for Life, who also happens to be a member of Highview, and she is an amazing leader. And we've had a long history with Beside You for Life in our own church for many years. Some of our uh, stalwart members, such as Sherry Small and Jane Bowles and Mary Kay Alberg and Wanda Armstrong many years ago, invested in counseling and invested their time. And we as a church invested our resources because we believe in standing for life. And we will have done that and we will continue to do so. And I wanted to bring Monica up here because we wanted to talk about just where we are and where we're going. And so Monica, I just wanna begin with, now Roe has been overturned. What should we anticipate in the days to come? Well, many of you uh, probably already realized that in 2019, the Kentucky legislature passed a trigger law which rendered abortion illegal immediately. It's one of few trigger state laws that actually did happen on Friday. Mm. So the abortion providers here, EMW and Planned Parenthood, stopped providing abortions Amen. on Friday. Amen. Uh, what it also means is that the way the, the decision was rendered, that um, the ACLU and Planned Parenthood, ACLU represents EMW, the private abortion provider, will immediately try to challenge the state laws in state court. Okay. Um, right now, Kentucky does not have a constitutional amendment protecting life, but there is one on the ballot in the fall, in the November uh, election, there is a constitutional amendment that would make life protected under the Kentucky Constitution. So it is conceivable that these lawsuits that they bring, you know, judges could say, oh, Kentucky recognizes a right to abortion until mm. that amendment is passed. Okay. So from a legal standpoint, that's where we are in Kentucky. Okay. And talk about a little bit about what are the things that you anticipate to take place in the sense of other organizations coming to Kentucky and just going over state lines, some of the things that you've described to me. Right. So um, there are activist groups in Kentucky raising money right now to uh, get women across state borders to obtain abortions uh, where they are still legal. Obviously, the main abortion tourism state closest to us that borders us is Illinois. But until the Indiana legislature takes action, uh, abortion is still legal in Indiana. Um, it's also legal in Virginia. So in those states surrounding Kentucky, those are the main three, but there are other states who have uh, triggers that aren't in, uh, enforced yet. So there's other states right now where women around Kentucky could go to those other states. But there's several organizations locally that are raising funds to either take women across state lines for abortions or provide them illegal abortion pills. Because right now under Kentucky law, um, well, under the FDA as well, women are not supposed to get mail order. Um, but I'm, I'm kind of misspeaking. There's all kinds of versions of this law, but um, mail order abortion pills are not supposed to be happening in Kentucky. Okay. I wanted you guys to hear that. I wanted you to hear about where we are because standing for life does not stop. That we have so far to go. And that according to the scriptures, according to Romans number, chapter one, that there is a little phrase in there that says there will be inventors of evil. Like they will continue to invent and find new ways to rebel against the Lord. And so for us, we have to remain diligent and continue to be a part of standing for life. And so Monica, how can Highview, how can we continue to serve and, and to help? Yeah, um, we expect our numbers at the Pregnancy Center to more than double in the weeks and months ahead in terms of women in need of services that we provide, pregnancy tests, ultrasounds, and the encouragement to choose life and not connect with those organizations. Mm. But um, anybody interested in supporting us, um, volunteering, praying, whatever, they can go to our website, besideyou.org, B-S-I-D-E-U, the letter U, dot O-R-G, click on our events tab, click on our get involved tab, volunteer, pray, come take a tour. We've got a prayer list you can sign up for. There's a lot of ways, no matter what level of involvement you wanna have. Um, in fact, we've got a job opening right now for intake coordinator, which is a receptionist on steroids. That person's gonna have to direct those inquiries that come in by email, phone and text to make appointments and connect to the right people. So if you want a paid position with our ministry, go also go to our website, click on the Get Involved tab because there's a jobs posting uh, list there as well. So Monica there's lots of ways. Monica and LinkedIn is happening this morning. So if you need a job, you're like, go ahead, like you submit that resume. I love it. I love it. It's the way it should be, man. Yeah. 
there are ways, multiple ways for us to be involved personally. And so we need to take the step of that to pray about it and be actively involved. And how can we obviously engage spiritually by praying? What are some specific prayer requests? Yeah, um, many of you may not realize that pregnancy centers all over the country were threatened by anarchists uh, when the Dobbs decision draft was leaked. Over between 50 and 60 pregnancy centers and pro-life entities around the country have been attacked. Uh, yesterday, I got word that a pregnancy center in Colorado was actually the victim of vandalism and arson. And some of you all may remember uh, Ryan and Lauren Helfenbein. They moved to Virginia. The pregnancy center in their neighborhood was uh, attacked over the weekend as well. So first of all, pray for safety um, for all the pro-life workers. Uh, also pray for moms, moms and dads who are going to be seeking our services, who wake up this week, find out they're pregnant and wonder what they're gonna do. Um, 70% of the families um, in poverty in this town are single parent families. Um, these are families that have already chosen life, um, but they're living in poverty. So pray for uh, single parent households. Pray for the fathers to step up. I don't know if anybody saw Tony Evans' press release yesterday, but one of the things he said is it's time for men to step up and parent and Amen. father Amen. those children. But for the women who do not have men in their lives, the church has to step up and be the father and be the husband. The greatest, most famous unplanned pregnancy from a human perspective in the world was Jesus Christ, our <laughs> Lord and Savior in the womb of Mary. That's right. And God had a plan and he spoke to Joseph in a dream mm -hmm. to be her husband and to be the earthly father of Jesus. Mm -hmm. And that's a message our culture has abandoned. And so just pray for that truth to hold throughout our culture. Our women have bought a lie, mm. and so have men. And the church has, I'm just gonna say it, they've outsourced the support of these women and men to the government. Mm. And it's time for the church to bring them back into the fold. Mm. I love it. Mm. Well, if that doesn't bring conviction, <laughs> Hyvie, it's time for us to step up and to honor the Lord to honor the Lord of life and to get involved and find a way for us to come alongside of those who are in need and to pray and to help and to serve. And this is our moment and we don't wanna miss it. And I'm so, Monica, I'm so thankful for you. Yes, go ahead. You got more, I know you got more. I know, one thing I haven't said is in addition to supporting women who are pregnant, we support women and men who've had abortions in their past. Statistics show that at least a quarter if not more people in this pew that are east, that are at central, may have had abortions, supported abortions in the past. And we have post-abortion counseling and post-abortion Bible studies for men and women to heal from what happened in their past. Whether the abortion was last week or 50 years ago before Roe was passed, we support post-abortive women and men as well. Awesome. There's such a, a full range of services that you guys provide. I'm so thankful for you, so thankful for your ministry and for us to be able to be a part of it. But Javi, this morning, I want us to stand together this morning and I want us to lift up Monica in prayer and for us to pray together as a church. So join me in prayer, let's pray. Lord Jesus, thank you. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for the overturning of Roe. Lord Jesus, thank you that you have once again shown yourself as faithful. Father, may we now step in and be and follow your lead and be faithful. Lord Jesus, you've shown us in your word that Lord, you are the author of life. You are the one who has made us, that we are wonderfully and fearfully made. And Lord Jesus, may we come alongside of every person and truly stand for life in a loving way. Father, we just pray for Monica. We pray for her team. We pray for beside you for life. Father, protect them. Lord Jesus, raise up workers for this harvest. And Lord Jesus, may we be faithful to come alongside and to love and to equip and pour into, and Lord Jesus, to glorify your great and holy name. Father, we just pray for our nation. Father, we pray that they will turn from the rebellion and turn to you. And Lord Jesus, not only will abortion become unlawful, but Lord Jesus, it will literally become unthinkable. Lord, it will become unthinkable in our hearts, Lord, as we are changed and transformed by you. Father, we just pray for a revival and awakening. Father, we just pray for a movement of Christ among our land. And Father, we pray for healing. And Lord Jesus, speak to us personally. May we step out personally 
and follow your lead to be obedient to you. And we pray for this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Hi, View. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for Monica for being here.